downtown. Downtown K. Downtown. You about to go downtown. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, and welcome to another week's episode of Downtown Podcast. Now, today we have a beautiful, beautiful, talented entrepreneurial queen in the building, and she goes by the name D. Irvin. And welcome Down. to Downtown Career Queen. <laughs> hey, everyone. How are you doing this week during this pandemic? How is life? Life's great. Last year around this time, it was crazy as hell, but now today it's great. <laughs> it's great. I hear that. I hear that. No, I, I usually leave this question to the end, but it's great. It's, it's things are happening, but downtown, as I said, stands for don't waste no time with negativity. What is a situation where you feel like it was negative and you could have definitely dealt with it one way, but you somehow find the strength inside to just rise above and like you all surprise yourself like, whoa. I didn't give that any negative energy. What What is that situation for you? Um, one of. <laughs> one girl, because there's like a million of them. Like, where do you want me to start? <laughs> well, I, I feel like I walked away from my ex with no negativity. Mm. I felt like I just left it alone and went about my business compared to what the old me would have done mm. so and I, I i literally just woke up one morning and was like yeah it's not gonna work and i just left it as a day but oh. what i you know the how i felt about it what i really wanted to do darn sure wasn't just walk away yeah but yeah. i did and so that goes back to what I said at the beginning. Um, I'm definitely at a great space, peace now compared to where I was this time last year. Yeah. it's And especially when it comes to, like, affairs of the heart, it's so hard sometimes. Like, you know, as women, we like to say to men, oh, you guys think with your penis and not with your head. Like, But as women, mm -hmm. sometimes we think with our hearts or our pussy and not with our yeah. head. <laughs> exactly when it's good, you'll be like, I'm going to stay for a little while longer. Just, just one more time. Just one more one time. time. Like, <laughs> one more time. <laughs> and then one more time, if you think about it, it'd be like, toxic as fuck. you be feeling like, what the fuck did I just do? Like, why? Yeah. Girl, it's crazy, but I, I really think that and I always tell the girls, the women, I don't want y'all to feel like I'm on y'all, but I'm on y'all because we are our biggest enemies. We do it to ourselves. All the signs and everything be right there. And yeah. um, I watched an interview yesterday where uh, the lady was saying, this world has conformed us to mentally think, oh, you don't need a man and this, that, and the other. You so woman in pro this, woman in pro that, but mm -hmm. we do. That's what God put men on earth and women on earth for, for each other. So yeah, you sense. shouldn't feel like that. You just have to start picking the right person for you because all men are not dogs and all this other shit that go on that you, you know, that the world make you feel like because if you think about it no matter how much success money wealth whatever you have when you by yourself that shit is lonely as fuck and who wants to be like that yeah out of all the heartache and pain and everything else i always say i'm not giving up on real genuine true love i'm not doing it because i don't want to be rich by myself bitch i want to share it with somebody <laughs> Period. no they like you're speaking all facts and what was what was one of those things because for me, I've been in bad relationships and it's multiple things that had to give me that strength to like leave. But what is one of the things that you're comfortable with sharing that you decided this was something that helped, whether it was a sign or something that helped to give you that courage and that strength to say enough is enough. I need to like be done with this. Feeling. Feeling, what is the word I want to use? Feeling, just feeling less than. When you mm. with a person and... Like your self-esteem. Yeah, and you just feel like, 
it's it's kind of undescribable because it's empty, empty. That's it. Yeah. Feeling empty. Yeah. You with a person, you in a relationship. To feel empty is the worst thing in the world. To feel empty and you're actually with another person. So that was it for me. That was like, yeah, this is it. Yeah. And it's so crazy. Every time I talk about it, like I could feel that whole thing all over again. Really? Like I remember I'm it. Sorry, I don't mean to do that. No, to no, 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 no. I'm okay <laughs> with listen. Yeah. It's fine. It's just that it um it it constantly gives me strength because it's like I know I never want to feel like that again. Yeah. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. And when I think about it, it's everything was right there. Nothing nothing never is obsolete. Nothing is never, oh, you're going to go down this street or walk down this path and you're not going to have no signs on what to do next. They all be right there. Yeah. We just do what we want to do in the flesh. That's just, that's pretty, Ooh. it's pretty normal. We do what we want to do in the flesh. Don't just skim over that. I'm listening. <laughs> Don't just skim over that. That's big facts, though. Yeah, that's, that's, girl, that shit is so true, and I just have to, girl, I'm, I'm a jokester, so, so am I. Matter, <laughs> no matter how bad shit is, when I tell you I'm going to make a joke out of it, because I'll be like, come on, bro, like, you, it was just right there, right there. Yeah. but like you say, yeah. if it's some good dick, whatever, you be like, yep. one more time, <laughs> one more time. It's oh never one more time. If that person, if y'all have fun together, just, and I tell people all the time, just because you get along with somebody, y'all have fun together, that doesn't mean that's your person. We have to learn how to determine um, different relationships and stuff, you know? So what are some of the things, because it wasn't just this relationship that helped you to learn that, how to differentiate and put people, a struggle I used to have when I was younger, my mom, I'm Jamaican, well, my, my family's Jamaican, I'm Canadian, and she always used to say to me, you know, everybody I know your friend, you're in this friend, friend business, everybody I know your friend, so <laughs> translate. <laughs> Right? Even though I know Atlanta has Jamaicans, you know, but like everybody isn't your friend. And just because someone is nice and your acquaintances, it doesn't mean that's your friend. So what are some things like that you would say are red flags to look out for to be like, this is something that isn't as or of a friend, but it's more of someone just acquaintance you keep like my therapist told me um she said if a person isn't there when you needed them most you need to reevaluate that relationship mm. and that was that was a session about me with friends just female friends you know period and I'm a person I'm very big on friendship and uh, somebody told me, you too loyal. Mm. And Is there such a thing, to, though? I, I believe so. And mm. only to say that to say, it is when you just give your loyalty away for free. Not saying it's a cost financially or anything like that. Ooh. Everyone don't deserve your loyalty. And I used to just give that away. You didn't have to earn it. If we were friends, if we were cool, I'm loyal to you. That's dead. I don't do that shit no more. Because that's how I always ended up hurt with the short end of the stick feeling played or yeah. You know, so yeah. You can't you just can't give that away. It's especially if you know your limits or you're unlimited in loyalty. Yes. And I know for a fact that my loyalty is unlimited. So I can't just give that shit away because once a person befriends you, um, they can they can wean that out, especially a person that is manipulative, a person that is a user. Um, they definitely can see that. So I think they kind of prey on that. And once they 
find out, oh, she lost you. I know she don't have my bag. Oh, that's that's it. Yeah. They they don't never want to let you go, but they'll run you dry. They'll keep 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 until it's like okay, yeah, this this it. And once you're done with them, they'll go find somebody else to do the same shit to. So true. Don't judge me, but I feel like for me, like my 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 toxic friendship would be like the friend with the the young children, and. Oh. That was like cool of me. It's not some because I'm always like, yo, like I don't have children personally, but I'm like, just because we're both young and you know how that goes. So it would get mm -hmm. to the point where we were going out to eat. You're forgetting your wallet. We're good. We're getting our nails done. You're forgetting your wallet. You know what I mean? And the kids are there and they're hungry and like. As I said, I'm a nice person. Oh, <laughs> girl. I let them live with me and all kind of shit. Yes. They put out with their kids and just all kind of shit. They, they steal from me, girl. All kind of shit that happen, okay? Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's, it, it, it leaves the good people feeling scorned sometimes. So I'm happy that you mentioned therapy because that is an, um, like, an amazing tool to help guide you and reflect on things and like move better moving forward in your life. So how has mm -hmm. like therapy helped you in terms of like your relationships with people and most importantly, your relation relationship with yourself? It helped a lot. Like when I tell you more than I. Are I'm you just doing therapy because everybody's like Ther therapy? Are oh, you no, like. I'm a, I'm a psychology major. So no, no, Woo, no, no, no. Tell them. <laughs> No, that's that's reality. Like, and I don't do shit because everybody else do it. I've been on that kick. Um, like I said, I'm a psychology major, so I'm big on emotions and feelings and why you did this and how you felt like that. And I like to get to the root of things. You can't just tell me, oh, um, I went crazy or something. You just didn't wake up and go crazy. Something happened prior to... Uh, to this point where you're mentally broken or you feel like you went crazy or you killed someone, or all this type of stuff, it just didn't happen. It's continuous things that have happened over a period of time that will make you snap. So, and I watch all those HD channels and all that, and that shit is someone's reality. You know, it's not that snap shit ain't fake or nothing like that. That's a woman, a person, whoever that's been in a situation and snap. But again, in our community, they feel like if you go, other people around us make you feel like if you go to therapy, you're crazy, something wrong with you. That's not true. You need someone that you can pour all this out into because you can't, in our community, just tell your mama, oh, this, this, and this. Like, I couldn't just go sit down and talk to my mom about all my problems. She got to go to work. She got to do this. She got to do that. So she ain't really trying to heal what I got going on. And um, my within my family, a lot of stuff transpired when we was young. My uncle killed my grandmother. And these kids that, my cousins that found my grandmother, their parent never gave them the opportunity to go to counseling. And now they almost 40 years old. One of my cousins is mentally gone. Mm -hmm. One of them have bipolar disorder. So it all transpired from something. It just didn't happen today. Those kids never got the opportunity to better themselves mentally, to know how to deal with the other obstacles that come with life. They never got over finding our grandmother dead. It never happened. It's just something that was swept under the rug and life goes on. But that, that's not reality. Life, didn't, life went on, but their life never went on. So when I have these conversations with them and they're bringing that up, which was 25 27 years ago it's like damn that's my family's reality that my elder family swept under the rug as if nothing ever happened yeah yeah no, that's but therapy i think is much needed and what i'm working on for the near future is a facility where you know you're not going to look at it like therapy it's going to be a place where you come and just free yourself whatever you want to talk about whatever because that's going to draw the people in so they don't feel like, oh, I'm not going to therapy. That's for crazy people. That's, it's not for crazy people. 
I feel like the universe is just like connecting because literally yesterday I had an interview with this um, young artist and she's a young black woman, a young mother, but she is not recently, but part of like her, her artistry, her music is birthed from like being in a seriously abusive like relationship or mm -hmm. marriage, I should say, and she finally deciding to say enough is enough and she was closing to me how like she really wants to start speaking to women and like sharing her story but she was like listing out all all these things and I'm like listen like you need to like if your spirit is telling you to do that there's a reason and you start now like there's a because people need more people that look like yourself that look like you that look like me sharing these experiences and continuously letting the women out there that are being silent and suffering in silence Mm -hmm. we are not alone because we do that and suicide is so big these days it's oh. like the it's crazy and it's because they don't you know the people that go through these mental things they don't feel like are they embarrassed to talk about it and if you don't talk about it once the enemy attacks your mind it's nothing else it's like <laughs> yeah you, you really have to have some serious strength to to come back because if you think about it your mind never stops going never it never stops yeah. even in your sleep you're thinking about something yeah like true. girl and between biology and psychology learning how the mind and the brain works that shit really work while you're sleeping mm -hmm. yeah or else your you body is just sleep yeah. because you need rest to function but your brain is keep going and going and going so if you're mentally having all these things going on that shit just rolls over into the next day into the next day and you don't have anyone to release these things to and these feelings and these emotions and once your mind is taken over they don't have anything else to do and that's why they on drugs and all this and all that and it's just it's really deeper than just regular normal everyday stuff it's true so when it comes to psychology and just having that interest in that field and I'm so like, I know it's probably like not recently, but congratulations to you because I just love being black women within these spaces. And it's, it's really motivating to myself because I remember when I was supposed to do accounting and I decided to do social work. My family was like, you know, <laughs> not something that it's either doctor accountant or um what is the other profession that caribbean parents usually tell you that's what you should be doing so thank you for just making that sacrifice are you the only person in your like immediate family that went that route oh yeah my mom was a, a social worker wow yeah she has a camera hook for women girl she yeah but she stopped mom <laughs> <laughs> like girl tap into it but she definitely she has the heart for it she's very compassionate for women she was um a first lady and all kind of stuff transpired in her relationship her marriage and she left her marriage but she i always tell her it's a part of your testimony like other women need to hear that we really stick around and stay longer than we should but again, all the signs be there. So true. Would you say, um, partially with your mom having that background, that's kind of what helped to influence you to get into that field? Or just what was your road to discovery and even getting into psychology? Really, it was watching not her in the field, but I, I was more big on what happened with my uh, grandmother. Like, I wanted to know what transpired that to happen mentally with my uncle, like how. And we jam tight to this day, me and my uncle. And again, drugs played a major part in it. Mm -hmm. um, and just dealing with my own, my own stuff. And I think for me, it was more of um, uh, being a teenage mom. Like, I didn't experience, because I have, like, two other friends that were teenage moms. I didn't experience what they experienced throughout their families and stuff like that. I wasn't um, put out or anything. But it was more of a mental thing, like, what's next? Where do I go from here? So 
you know, when I saw the girls get put out their homes and stuff like that, that just gave me um, compassion for women and just mentally want to know how do you overcome these different emotions and feelings and stuff like that. You have a beautiful soul, D. If that's what you're here, you <laughs> Thank you. You do. You do. Like, just watching you even, like, speak on these things is not something you're just, like, regurgitating and, like, practicing off script. It's like, you're really out here putting that work in. So, you know, it's refreshing when you have you. in the world. Now, not only are you just this beautiful soul, but as well an author. And your most recent book, I should say, I want to get the title correct, is When a Dab Spills the Tea. Yes. Now, how did the inspiration for that title, the book, come up? Girl, being a down-ass bitch. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Girl, it actually was my little cousin. She started dating this guy and he went to jail and she called me and was like, girl, what do I do? How do I get this nigga out of jail? Yada, yada, yada. And I was like, girl, what? What happened? So we get into this long conversation and I tell her everything she needs to do. And after the conversation, she was like, bitch, you ought to write a book. And I was like, girl, I ain't write no book. Whatever, whatever. So this wasn't the first time somebody told me that I should write a book. And uh, like in the seventh grade or something, I got in this book contest and uh, I started, I wrote a little, it was a little book about being a teenage mom and stuff. And I won the contest. So of course that was 20 years ago. My son is 20 now. So <laughs> I never, every now and again, I will always be like, oh, I'm gonna write a book, but I just brushed it off. Yeah. And, uh, when I was engaged uh, to this guy, he was incarcerated, girl. Long story short, he came home, made two babies, and life was over, felt like. So I was like, yeah, I know that there's other women that's gone through this, have been through this. So I just started writing about all the different situations I've been in, being down from being down with my friends and all kind of stuff. And I just started writing and never stopped. Yeah. I'm usually the down-ass friend. I'm just like... <laughs> I'm gonna support you. I'm gonna I'm ride around this block and help you look for his for your yes. That's me. <laughs> what you want? Oh, come on, come get me. I'm coming. <laughs> we gonna pull up, girl. You finished work an hour ago. Why are you still sitting here? Listen, <laughs> that is me, girl. That's me. And I just told somebody I was like, I had to just step out of that space and be down for me all the way because all the way. All the fucking way. Nobody don't be down for you like that. No one. No one. You got to put that energy into you. So I just feel like right now, today, and moving forward. And I even told my son this. I was like, listen, you 20 years old. I ain't down for you no more either. I got to be down for me. I didn't give you everything I had. I got to focus on me. That's the only way I'm going to be as successful as I know and the visions and the dreams and everything that I see if I focus on me. Yeah. When you out there playing football, you ain't thinking, and if you are thinking about me, kudos, maybe that help you go harder, but I got to focus on me because if I don't pay this hydro bill, like who is going to do this? Like me, you don't, and he do support me, but not like I feel like he should. Mm -hmm. And that's just reality. Nigga, I be out in the rain at football games. You don't come out in the rain and do nothing for me with my book or none of that. So you do your thing and I'm going to do mine. And we'll meet at the top. And people be like, you are so rough. No, that's reality. Yeah. That's reality. Without um giving too much away, and please, D, do not. I'm, I I want a copy of the book, okay? I'm sending it. Just send me your address. I'm going to send it. But... Hopefully you will arrive before Christmas, but when um, you think about your book and what you want people to take away like the most or an experience that, although you can't tell us what to feel while like reading your book, what is something that you really don't want us to miss? I don't want people to miss the fact that you can't, you can't miss the signs. Like, we got to stop 
And this this is definitely is not obsolete for the men, but it's definitely for the women because we're naturally nurturers. We want to just think about every relationship you've been in. You want to give that person everything you got and you are lack on your own stuff, you know? And I just want all the women to believe in you and do what's best for you first. Nothing wrong with being down for your dude. Nothing wrong with being down for your friend, but be down for you first. Because when you read that book, you're going to see all them times I was down for my nigga and all this other stuff and got the short end of the stick. It's going to come a time when the universe, God, whoever you believe in, send you somebody that's going to be just as down for you as you down for them. But you will never be able to accept that person until you're wholeheartedly down for you because you're going to be trying to pour into them just imagine pouring 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 i didn't pour so much into people so that's taking everything out of me and they don't have nothing to pour back into me and then that leave me stuck empty and i'm mad with them but they didn't take it from me you gave it to them yeah yeah so that's the main that's that's really the main thing i just I don't, I don't want, we, I literally was just in a situation where I literally had to tell one of my good friends, I can't do this no more. Mm. Like it's, it's nothing else that I could say because, you know, I, I know you love me. I know we friends. I definitely believe that, but I feel myself literally pouring out too much into you and you not pouring it back into me. Yeah. Not saying you have to give me the same thing I give you, but my cup is getting empty and your shit getting filled up. What the yeah. fuck am I doing? I was just speaking with um with one of my close friends about like acquaintances. And I was just like, nah, like for real, I realized a lot shifted for me in 2020. Actually 20, 2018 going into 2021 soon, when I started paying a lot of attention to how I felt after leaving anyone and everyone I had encounters with. And a lot of people, like, shout out to y'all, still love (laughs) y'all, but you don't really see me. Like, be on the 33rd because every time it's me giving, pouring out, and it's like, you're just left feeling so drained. And it's like- Girl, that is the worst feeling. Who do you have to like turn to and have that moment with? Exception of God, of course. But yep. And I say that if if that's the only person I could put my all in trust and faith in, that's all who I'm gonna be with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm tired of laying on the floor crying, and all I got to do is pray, and yeah. nobody else here. Yeah. I trusted in you, I trusted in you, I trusted in him, I trusted in her, and I'm left stuck. Yeah. So, um, I know my time is, like, pretty much almost up, but if you're okay, I'm really enjoying speaking with you. <laughs> if I can ask you a couple more questions, but don't feel shy to tell me, girl, I gotta go. <laughs> oh, no, I'm good. Thank you, T. I really enjoy speaking with you. You're, like, you're giving me life. You're giving me life. Now... <laughs> I want to, there are two things because you're saying a lot and I hope you guys that are watching, you're really just soaking in this game that this down ass bitch (laughs) is just letting you know about, okay? Now listen, when it comes to relationship with your son, you know, excuse me if I'm being too forward, right? As I said, it's a safe space. But when I always think, because I said I don't have children of my own, but I always think to myself like, when you're a young mom, does that mean that your child like respects you less or does that make you closer? You know, I always find like, I wonder what that dynamic is for a lot of like the women or men that I knew that had children at a younger age than like less than 20 and things like that. So for you, if whatever you're comfortable with like sharing, how do you feel Girl. Like your child respects you? My son know I will kill him. When I tell you kill him, <laughs> girl, I remember, girl, this was the funniest shit I laugh at all the time. 
big pregnant walking around high school and one of my friends in high school was like girl because i had already made up his name and everything they was like girl what the wine gonna call you girl when i tell you girl i stopped i said what the fuck you mean we gonna call me mama that ain't my fucking friend <laughs> what <laughs> and your question is valid because Younger mouse felt like that. I'm not your friend, though, at all, at all. Now that he's 20 years old and he's a man, like, just recently, our relationship got close. Yeah. As far as, like, what well, he called me every day, texted me every day, because it wasn't. But he always tell me, he was like, man, you was just so rough. Like, girl, I did not play with him. Because, one, I never wanted you to feel like because you a boy, you got the ups on me. Two, because we close in age, I don't care. I will kill you, literally, and go do time because you're not going to ever disrespect me. People in the street don't disrespect me. You, my own child, not going to disrespect me. I raised my godchild since she was 10 years old. She's 25 now with two kids. She never disrespected me. Yeah. And the one time I felt like she disrespected me, I almost took her head off. Yeah. And he was in the same house right now crying, Mama, please don't kill my sister. <laughs> she was going to die. Like, I don't play that with them. Yeah. But I, I definitely know, like, I've seen, and most of his friends' parents are older. I didn't see any her them children get small with their mama. You know, now he grown, he might say stuff like, all right, mama, call you back and hang up, whatever. I don't care about that, but girl, he know not to play with me. We not about to do that because I don't disrespect him. Like in New Orleans, we say bitch a lot. I probably in 20 years slipped and said, bitch, don't do it. And he, he always, I always raised him as you a man. So girl, he'll let me know like, mama, listen, don't call me no B. And I'd be like, my bad. And I curse him out, call him something else, but I'm not going to disrespect yeah. you. So don't disrespect me, period. Well, that's a big moment there. And thank you for sharing that part of your parenting because a lot of the times it's like, just like, how do I say this in a better way? Where it's just like, I, I definitely grew up in a strict household. Like it was church, homeschool, church, homeschool. It was church, homeschool. Girl, my, my ex-boyfriend girl is, that's the lines of they, girl, they Jamaican. And yes. baby, his mama yes. do play. <laughs> she's out. School's done at three o five. She's outside of school in her Chrysler purple Intrepid, <laughs> three o nine. Like be, be like, where are you at? Like get out. Like my mom was playing no games. <laughs> um, but now looking back, I do say, you know, I thank you for you know, and I did have to rebel at times, but it is what it is. This part, and that's 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 yeah. normal, and like growing well raising him the one dad wasn't active in his life mm. my ex-boyfriend and the crazy thing our relationship wasn't even that long but still to this day we like this and he just took the wine in and that's been his dad ever since like they like this and it's just so amazing how God just put the right people in your life. He, the one I had a situation at school and it was like right in the peak of me and him being together. And girl, I, I never had to intervene, nothing. And still to this day, it's like, that's that. That's from, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it just be amazing how the people that God put in your life and the choices that you make can possibly alter it so that goes back to what i said about learning how to distinguish certain relationships yeah. you have to learn how to do that because again the signs are always there but the flesh is weak you do it you want to do and that shit will ruin you or it can make you better it's true it's true so another staple question that we do ask here at downtown is you have the four elements most of the times I get this wrong, so hopefully I get it right today. But you have the four elements. You have earth, fire, um, earth, fire, wind, no, air and water. Yeah, earth, fire, air, and water. So which element do you resonate with the most or you feel like represents you the most and why? Okay, so I need a little 
definition of them all? <laughs> so that's the thing. There is no like definition. It's kind of like even when you're at the psychiatrist and they make a doodle and they're like, what do you see? Like, it's whatever you, there's no right or wrong. I, I, I feel like fire. <laughs> fire? Okay. Why do you feel like fire? I feel like because I can be very hot headed sometimes. Mm. But if you turn it down, I could be just what you need. Like, you know, when you're cooking, if you turn it too high, it'll burn. Mm. If you have it low enough, it's just right. That's I never heard that one. I never <laughs> heard that one. Like we've gotten fire and I'll and I'll share some like someone once said, I think that would be my top top three answers though. I really like that, D. Because um someone else had said to me they had chosen fire and they had said it was the spark or the start of evolution. And once man discovered how to make fire, that's when like earth and you know things mm. really are progressing for us as like a human race but i really love that like cooking analogy because you're right and i was speaking with someone yesterday like we were having a full like two hour like you know one of those deep deep like girl talks <laughs> like, a lot of things but the process of making gold right when you like youtube it and things like that you literally have to go through the fire to be mm. your gold and when I tell you, I just told somebody this yesterday. I say, wow. that was today. I say, I'm literally that person that I got to touch the fire. You can't just tell me it's hot. I need to touch it. Yeah. I got to touch it. Even if it's a little touch, I just got to touch it. <laughs> I got to see. I got to see for myself. Yeah. And it's crazy because that what makes me stronger. Mm. You can't just tell me. If you do that, that's going to hurt. Or if you do that, that's not good. Mm. I'd be like, it might have wasn't good for you. Let me see if it might be good for me. Yeah. And I've been like that my whole entire life. And that's not a bad thing. I feel like most people would hear that. I feel like, girl, but I'm listening to that. And I'm like, that's not a bad thing. Because if we're consistently telling people to focus on your own lane and do your own thing and listen to your voice and what's meant for you and what's good for you, just because, like, I'm not going to, well, I won't say never, but, you know, writing a book is not something I see in my near future. I write articles. I write think pieces. But writing a book, I just don't know. I, I don't know yet what in my life is that much of me to give, you know? <laughs> Where I feel like it could fill an entire book. And you saying that is like, I hope people don't take that the wrong way because that's not a bad thing. And this this just me saying it to you just now, it gave me a, a thought. Um, damn, I had a brain freeze. I'm so mad. Oh, Shit. I'm going to help trigger it. Oh. and walking in your purpose and doing oh, I don't I don't tell like when I do speaking engagements and stuff especially with the young girls I don't never tell them what they shouldn't do I don't do that because even though I tell them if I never been through nothing y'all wouldn't want to listen to me like what the hell am I to tell y'all if I ain't never did no wrong shit or nothing and really have the consequences to put in your face and show you what happened you wouldn't want to listen to me but i'm still not gonna tell you don't do that i'm gonna tell you this is what i did and this is what happened you might got a better chance and then make them think like damn she told me to just do it go ahead bitch yeah i'm telling you i went to jail eight times i'm telling you i was in a car with a nigga getting shot at like all this type of stuff so if you want to do it go ahead but i'm telling you but i'm telling you this is what happened now, again, you might have a different uh, situation. You might have a different ending. But this is what it is. Yeah. So that uh, that definitely, that gives them more of um, more of a, of a, a open. To think for themselves. Yeah, to, to really, like, take heed to it. Because people don't want you talking at them. They want you talking to them. Yes. And then they they open to asking questions and opening up to you. If you just why 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 and at them, they like, 
I don't want to tell her I did this. I don't want to tell him I did that. That's so, yeah, that's and my, my main goal is really to the, uh, my main focus is the teenage girls. Because that's where it starts. I started having sex at 12 years old. Like, yeah, they need someone to show them, like, hey, you can either do this or you can either do that. It's up to you. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really important for us to keep having these conversations. And thank you so much just for sharing, like, speaking, speaking with young women today is, like, more important than ever, especially with, like, mm -hmm. the first female vice president in the White Office. And today I was reading some new articles. This is the first all-woman, um, I guess, like, vice presidential, like, team. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's very important for us to remember our self-esteem and our self-worth and knowing that we're pure gold and that we're worth it. Like, I feel like maybe I wouldn't have been, I don't know if I would have not been touched by certain people in the family or whatever, had I been told these things when I was younger, but mm -hmm. it's a shot, it's worth giving a try. Like, like even though for you, you may feel like you got to touch it. Sometimes it just doesn't hurt to hear seriously from someone real. That's actually like, I don't want to, I don't want no advice from no one that hasn't been through nothing. Mm -hmm. Period. Like, it doesn't make sense. How are you? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like you hear guns, you're running. Like, I don't like, you know, so it's very important for us to just like, when people say, oh, children are the future, but they seriously are, like, more than ever, more than ever. Yeah. So <laughs> Now, when it comes to, I always like to throw in a random question in there to just help things and like, because I know sometimes the conversation gets a bit heavy. So I feel like asking you today, Dee, what did you eat today? I love food. I love to. I love to cook. What oh, I'm girl, this is the perfect question today, girl. I had a whole red fish, girl. It's the best red fish ever. Like snapper. Yes, head on everything. It's did I put it on my page, girl? It's so freaking good. Like it's the best red fish in New Orleans, girl. It's the whole head, girl. It's. Oh. I need. I like. Oh. I've never been to New Orleans, but it, it, pre-COVID and still post-COVID is definitely somewhere on my list. All the food shows I love to watch, y'all are one of the top places in the world for food. So, mm, was it like, how was it seasoned? Like, take me there. <laughs> so they put, girl, oh my God. <laughs> First, let's start with the appetizer, the fried bread. It's fried bread. With uh, I had a, a side of gumbo. It was delicious, okra gumbo, and then they came out with this fish. About it's longer than the screen. Yeah, it's yeah. Like that long. It's the whole red fish eyes still in there. Everything, girl, it's delicious, and it has um, what is that? Was it fried? Cause I love me some fried fish. No, it's girl. I think it's broad or something. It's mm -hmm. olive oil and. All this green stuff on there. Oh, girl. It's so bomb. Like, <laughs> girl, this is like my favorite. And it was hitting the spot. Like, out of all the oh. things you remember today, you're like, that fish, right? Ooh, yes. <laughs> the seasoning looks, oh, yeah, that looks. Uh, girl. shining right there. Girl, this shit is like the best. <laughs> it looks like some sort of a like cilantro like so yeah that looks really good girl and it's crazy how i found it scrolling on instagram one day and somebody posted i was like oh they don't have this shit nowhere in the world this whole while it was in New Orleans. so when i clicked on because they they uh put the location girl when i clicked on it and saw it was in New Orleans, i went Shout like, out to them Shout i out went out maybe like a month later and went there and baby i've been going ever since <laughs> Seriously, I find like during the pandemic, I like to see the lit stuff like that, and I'm like, you know what? Let me try to make it at home. Let me see if I can like make it lit like that. Listen, and I just told my friend I was with, I was like, I want to catch a snapper and do this. Like, I want to do this at home. 
It's not that hard to to be honest. But I need it. I need a real one. I don't want no fake ass fish out the store. I want to go and get because it's so fresh, girl. The meat is snow white in the inside. Yeah. And I was making a joke. I was like, look like they went caught that shit this morning. <laughs> <laughs> girl, that shit was so good. You know, that's like in Jamaica. Like, honestly, I can be eating all this here. It's all great. But having it, we say bakayad, like, seriously, you could taste all the sea water. That's what we're Listen, I went to the Bahamas. What this year is? That was last 2020. year. 2020. <laughs> it is 2020, D. It was, it was December last year. So it's been a year. 2019. Girl, yeah. I had a fried redfish. Ooh. <sighs> wow. Yep, yep. <laughs> and I love food. Everybody be saying, how your damn stomach stay flat? I was like, baby, I drink my tea. So I'm working on that, y'all. A tea line, my own tea line. So Yes, I drink tea. I'm not a coffee drinker, so yes. Girl, when I tell you that damn fried red fish, <laughs> they had to just get it out the water because the restaurant is on the water. So I was like, oh, yeah, they got that today. Yeah. <laughs> Today. Yeah, that's really good. Oh, thank and you for sharing I go that out. with me. <laughs> thank you for sharing that with me. So I would like everyone to know, D. Irvin, where can everyone support you and buy? Actually, should... no, I have to ask you this. I'm sorry. Before we end, I have to ask you this. And shame on me for not asking you earlier. My apologies. So OnlyFans. I see the link in the bio. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an OnlyFans. What's, we, what's going on in your OnlyFans? What's happening? What's happening over there? So my manager said I had to revamp my Instagram. So I took all my sexy half naked pictures off I Instagram. I love your photos. Girls, <laughs> you're fucking great. Girl, I was like, what? That's how I made Instagram. I'm too fine. He was like, you're an author right. now. <laughs> if you want to do that, put that on uh, OnlyFans. And I was like, I can get OnlyFans? Okay. So I got an OnlyFans with all my sexy pictures. And when I be twerking, you know, I'm from the water, so I like to yeah. shake. So all that is on my OnlyFans, y'all. Yeah, so you guys, explicit, I like in New Orleans, we be popping pussy. We'll be twerking. We be popping pussy. That's what we yes. say in New Orleans. Pussy popping on the handstand. All that's on OnlyFans. <laughs> Literally, Jamaica, you wind up right up yourself, and Oh, listen. Oh. When I be watching them videos on YouTube, I be like, if I could dance like them Jamaican girls, I'd be rich. No, they're they're like, like it's something like. It's in y'all water or something. <laughs> I don't so they, like, girl, they, like, sometimes when I'm down there, they, like, one of the most <laughs> epic parties ever. I, it's not going on anymore, but it used to be called Pasa Pasa. Kind of like how Atlanta has Magic City. There's certain yeah. parties in the dance So is that like the, you know, the scene on Belly when they was at the club and the girls was outside? Yes, yes. Girl, so I want to go! <laughs> girl, I would go crazy! Tell you it gets it yeah you have a great you fit in just fine the men girl the men will not be leaving you alone I'm telling girl, you girl look I just told my best friend I was like girl she just had surgery I was like bitch you gotta hurry up so Very we can go to the uh carnivals and all that I won't be half naked turned up yes, I'm ready. yes. <laughs> especially after the year we've had like not nah. all my I know it's like, gonna be we're weird. ready we're ready we're ready <laughs> girls out everything we're ready <laughs> I am ready for it. <laughs> So I had to ask. I didn't want to end up without asking. Thank you for entertaining me. Now, let everyone know where they can support your OnlyFans, where they can buy your book, where they can get in contact with you if you feel. <laughs> <laughs> let everyone know where we can hit you up. My OnlyFans is I am Super D. Uh, my Instagram is... I am Super D. No, the real Super D. I'm sorry, y'all. Instagram is the real Super D. The book page is Read Dab Now. Uh, all the merch. I have t-shirts, men's boxer line. The T is also on there. Um, and Facebook is Dewana Irvin. 
So everything is pretty much in sync. Either read Dab now, I am Super D, or Dewana Irving. And I'm on all social platforms. Twitter is I am Super D. I'm not really big on Twitter. Somebody, if y'all out there, you can Twitter coach me because I really don't know how to work Twitter. It's a but... hard world to get, like, yeah. What? Girl, I want to be involved and I am clueless. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to keep up with the tweets or nothing. It's all about the comment section. Okay, I'll work on it. <laughs> it's not about the tweet, but you look at the replies, and that's where, trust me, that's where the gold is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to do that. I be so busy trying to promo on Instagram and Facebook, I never get a chance to get into Twitter. So what I've been doing is going on there, just reposting so people can see at least that I'm active on there. Yeah, honestly, Facebook is where it's at, but we can... Us, yeah, no, like, trust me, I can even like DM you separately, but yes, help me. Everything Everybody else, keeps telling me that everything else. Oh, and the website, y'all, is www.thesuperdcollection.com. www.thesuperdcollection.com. Yep, thank you so much for being like, thank you. I enjoyed it. I really had. Like, wait, to- hold on. Is Drake really serious about the? No, who is that Gucci man about the Toronto thing? Because I want to come, but I'm a convicted felon. I need to know can I still? Yo, I'm trying to for all free all my dogs. Clear up all the people for them. Free up all the dog them. I just want to know can I come when this is Drake, over? Help D out. Like listen, <laughs> he has like the mildest touch with that, but I'm hoping they free up the dog line soon. <laughs> okay, it don't work. I can see you in ATL. Okay, I moved back Friday, so I'm excited. A and safe, 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 safe with everything, D. Like, prayers Thank to you, your family. And do and not man. forget to DM me your address. I'm going to mail yes. it tomorrow. Yes, that's what I was just about to say I'm going to do. So, that is it for this week's episode of Downtown Podcast, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this Queen D. Urban. And you've heard all the keys she's given away pause rewind hit play again enjoy a glass of wine and listen and be that down ass bitch for yourself (laughs) (laughs) i enjoyed it thank you